This video is a new and improved, rewritten, re-recorded and re-edited 2.0 of a previous One Piece 101. The old video is still up if you'd like to watch it, but it was in serious need of an update, so enjoy. Listen up. You can pour drinks on me, you can throw food at me, you can even spit on me. I'll just laugh that stuff off. But, good reason or not, nobody hurts a friend of mine. Hello and welcome to One Piece 101, the series that breaks down everyone and everything in the One Piece world. Today we will be examining one of the most prolific figures in the series today, as well as a character who has been with us from the very beginning, Red Haired Shanks. Shanks is a relatively average sized human who is more often than not portrayed in a highly jovial manner, very much preferring to take his time and enjoy life, even when it comes to traversing the wildly dangerous Grand Line and the New World, which you can see in his brief appearances in the series as they are often accompanied by he and his crew partying hard and drinking heavily. Although Shanks is most renowned in the series for inspiring Luffy to become a pirate and giving our protagonist his trademark straw hat. However, outside of that action, Shanks has led an incredibly impressive career of his own. And this career begins with the most infamous pirate crew in the series, led by the former Pirate King, Gold D. Roger. A very young Shanks was an apprentice aboard Roger's ship, and so was subjected to the sheer power and chaos of the Grand Line, as well as its inhabitants, and exposed to skirmishes with future legendary figures, such as Golden Lion Shiki, and even the individual who would become known as the strongest man in the world, Whitebeard. And through it all, Shanks just kept on smiling, a trait possessed by several key characters in the series, one of which being Roger himself. Now at the time of this recording, Roger's exact relationship with Shanks is highly unknown. However, we do have one exceptionally important little detail, being that at some stage, Roger gave Shanks his straw hat, implying that there was a deep level of trust, or at the very least, a profound feeling of fate between the two of them. As for other members of the Roger Pirate, Shanks has frequently been shown in flashbacks with another apprentice pirate aboard the ship, Buggy the Clown. Although their relationship is significantly more volatile than Shanks and Roger, however, this mostly seems to stem from Buggy's side of things, as Shanks' general disposition just seemed to rub the clown the wrong way. So much so that Buggy even claimed that Shanks would never be able to make it as a pirate. And well, uh, I guess we'll find out how things turned out shortly, eh? As with all the Roger pirates, a large majority of their journey is unknown at this point in time. In fact, it's currently even impossible to say whether or not Shanks has personally set foot on Raftel, because there is precedent for other members of the Roger pirates not actually landing there, such as Nekomamushi and Inuarashi. In any case, after Roger became the Pirate King, he eventually disbanded the crew and turned himself into the Marines who promptly executed him at the place of his birth, Logtown. Shanks, along with many other future legends, were present at the execution that began the Great Age of Piracy and were shown mourning for his captain. However, the end of Roger's life would mark a new beginning for Shanks, who set out to form his own pirate crew, even inviting Buggy to come along with him, although Buggy vehemently refused, and the two would lose touch for over two decades. However, Shanks and his ever-growing charisma eventually found themselves gathering quite a loyal following, including his right-hand man, Ben Beckman, as well as managing to recruit a famed sniper named Yasop, who just so happens to be the father of Usopp, and the ever-hungry yet ever-powerful Lucky Roo. And this core group would continue to expand into what we know today as the Red Hair Pirates but it wasn't purely camaraderie generated by Shanks as he also found powerful rivals on his journey, with one particularly notable figure being Dracul Mihawk, who would go on to become the world's greatest swordsman. Allegedly, Shanks and Mihawk would seek each other out in the Grand Line for frequent duels, which were said to echo throughout the entire stretch of sea. With that said, the two are quite firmly rivals rather than enemies and are on very good terms. You may even be able to consider them friends in a very, you know, roundabout way. On the other hand, Shanks has also made some proper enemies on these seas and a particularly concerning one at that in Marshall D. Teach, who would eventually take on the name of Blackbeard. While it is still currently unknown when Shanks first encountered this man, it has been confirmed that Blackbeard is the person responsible for giving Shanks his trademark scar. It's also entirely possible that Blackbeard inflicted this injury prior to Shanks forming the Red Hair Pirates, given that his face was purposely covered at Roger's execution, although I should point out that this is speculation. Whatever the case, as a result, Shanks is quite possibly the only person in this world who sees Blackbeard for the threat he truly is, considering him far more dangerous than even pirates such as Charlotte Lin Lin or Kaido. But continuing his journey, at one stage he and his crew found themselves back at the comparatively peaceful sea of East Blue and making a temporary base on Dawn Island where Shanks would encounter Luffy for the first time. This young boy saw Shanks as a great role model and pleaded with him to join the Red Hair Pirates, but of course Shanks refused due to Luffy being far, far too young. Nonetheless, this island would go on to become the genesis of a new age, which all started when a bandit called Higuma the Bear intruded on the Red Hair Pirates and caused a bit of a scene in the bar. And at this point, we were treated to one of Shanks' key life philosophies, which is pacifism. Now, from everything we know about Shanks so far, it would certainly not be out of the question to ponder as to why he didn't just smack Higuma the Bear down right then and there with his superior power, but that just isn't Shanks' style, you know? Instead, Shanks saw 
sought out a peaceful solution, even if it made him look like a fool as a result, a trait that would be seeded within Luffy upon seeing it. Although after Higuma kidnapped Luffy, Shanks' attitude changed radically, stating that he would never forgive someone who hurt a friend of his. And all of this led to a scenario where Higuma the Bear was devoured by the Lord of the Coast, but that wasn't the end of it. Because in order to save Luffy's life, Shanks had to sacrifice his left arm to the Sea King, which he was more than willing to do, and went on to consider it an investment in the future. And just prior to departing Dawn Island, Shanks also gave Luffy the straw hat that had been given to him by Roger, and Shanks told Luffy to return it to him when he became a great pirate. Thus setting in motion the events of One Piece. But this was far from the end of Shanks' adventure, as he and the Red Hair Pirates would grow in power to the point where Shanks would be considered one of the four emperors of the sea, and thus become one of the most infamous figures on the planet. And it's very interesting to look at Shanks in this new light, especially considering that we know next to nothing about his physical abilities. What we do know is that Shanks is a user of all three types of haki, including the ever-rare Conqueror's Haki, which we saw on display when he dispatched the Lord of the Coast with a mere glare after losing an arm. And his proficiency in this area has even been complimented by Whitebeard. Furthermore, Ichiro Oda has gone on the record is stating that at the very least, Shanks would have been capable of easily knocking out all 100,000 members of the new Fishman Pirates who opposed the Straw Hats during the Fishman Island arc, whereas a post-time skip Luffy was only able to down half that number. Other than that though, we do know that Shanks is a swordsman, which makes sense given that he frequently dueled with Mihawk, and he chooses to wield a saber named Griffin, a weapon powerful enough to clash with the fearsome magma powers of a Marine Admiral, although greatly assisted by infusing the blade with armament haki. Despite this, through the years, Shanks has never lost his utmost concern for the pirate who scarred him, and when Blackbeard murdered a member of the Whitebeard Pirates, Shanks went so far as to personally appear before Whitebeard to express his concern and counsel his fellow Emperor not to allow his subordinate Port Gastios to pursue Blackbeard in retribution. Although this simply resulted in Whitebeard stating that it was 100 years too early for Shanks to be telling him what to do, and a clash so powerful that it split open the very sky above them. But of course Shanks did have good cause to be concerned, because Ace's subsequent defeat would become the catalyst of a battle between the Whitebeard Pirates and the Marines, known as the Paramount War. And believe it or not, this battle was almost infinitely more destructive, as another of the four emperors, Kaido, had his sights set on getting involved as well. However, Shanks and the Red Hair Pirates intercepted his forces, and while the exact outcome of this is unknown, Shanks and his crew were able to make it to the battleground in time to stop the Paramount War, although this action had come a bit too late as the Emperor Whitebeard, as well as Ace, had been killed. After single-handedly putting an end to the Paramount War, Shanks elected to assist his former enemies in the funeral proceedings of Whitebeard and Ace, showing great respect for both of the tragically deceased individuals. And here I'm going to put up the old spoiler warning. Feels a bit early, eh, since we aren't even in the post time skip events yet. But if you have not read or watched the Reverie arc to completion, then this is a fantastic time to jump to the following time in the video. More so than ever, it's pretty highly recommended to take this warning seriously, but for everyone who wishes to proceed, let's get into it. Following the events of Whole Cake Island and the declaration to the world of Luffy's emergence as the fifth emperor, Shanks appeared quite pleased with the news and stated that he was very much looking forward to meeting Luffy again. However, after this, he would go on to make a more shocking appearance at the Holy Land of Marijuana itself in order to speak in person with the Gorosei, wishing to discuss a certain pirate. Some more fun facts about Shanks. Rather interestingly, although we know very little about his exact abilities, we do know for a fact that Shanks is not a Devil Fruit user, as it was stated in an article about the four emperors published in Vija, which would make him the only emperor thus far not to have been a Devil Fruit user. After the events of Dress Rosa, in which Luffy's bounty was raised to 500 million berries, Shanks was briefly featured in a From the Decks of the World cover story, where he and the Red Hair Pirates visited the ruins of a certain island for a wedding. Of all of the characters in the series, Echiwa Oda has stated that Shanks is probably the most similar to himself, owing to his fun-loving, partying nature and cheerful personality. And finally, a truly useless fact. At one stage in the series, Shanks and Buggy got into an argument about whether the North or South Pole was colder, with Buggy claiming the North, while Shanks was in favor of the South. And in an SBS segment, Oda answered this question once and for all, stating that because the Antarctic Pole was a mass of ice, rather than a continent, the South Pole was colder, making Shanks, as per usual, correct. But that pretty much does it for Shanks. If you enjoyed this video and the content this channel produced in general, then please do consider donating to the Grand Line Review Patreon, because the support of all of your amazing people is what continues to make this channel possible. And if Patreon isn't quite your style, then please do leave this video a like, share, or subscribe, because it also helps support this channel an incredible amount. And if you'd like to join the fun at any time, then please do head over to my Discord server, where a wide array of shenaniganry takes place on a daily basis. And finally, please do comment with who, what, or where you'd like to see featured in the next One Piece 101. I've come to end this war. Red Hair Pirates, assemble.
Ben Beckman, Lucky Roo, Yasop, y you, and uh, and you, and uh, Monkey? Alright, something's going very wrong here. Can we just, can we just hold while we try this again, please?